Welcome. It is time. Constitution Radio. Douglas V. Gibbs right here on KMET 1490 AM. Your pass area talk station. And the... Let's see. Let, let me let me say this properly because, uh, uh, you know, Jazz Miss, this used to be the tagline he'd use for us. And it was such a good one. He told me I could steal it. The local show with the global footprint. I love that. Right after today's program, I got to run out of here, jump into my pinstripe suit, run down to the birth choice gala in Temecula. I am tonight's MC, the master of ceremonies, the guy in charge of delivering, I guess, uh, a snappy, uh, uh, approving, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, welcome kind of thing. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Tomorrow, I'll be uh, in Marietta at the uh, March of Remembrance. So, uh, you know, be sure to catch that also tomorrow, March of Remembrance there at Marietta. Alex, you on the air with us? I'm right here. Ready to How roll? Howdy doody, Rudy Kazooty. <laughs> and uh, I take it we have Dennis with us? Yeah, hi. Hi, Dennis. All right. Uh, let's get moving because we have a lot to talk about, but I, I want to start with something that's very fascinating. Because we've been talking about the Democrats' gas tax, the gas tax that's being pushed here in California that would take our, make us the most heavily gas taxed state in the union and um also the have the highest price gasoline in the country which i think we already that and um you know so they can spend more money what they say on infrastructure bridges and dams and roadways and potholes but they never do uh you know you and i know that it's going to go to uh pensions illegal aliens and bullet trains but here's what's really fascinating about it all Melissa Melendez, who, who uh, coincidentally is my assembly person in my district down here in Marietta, uh, Melissa Melendez, Republican, said that uh, she sent an, an official letter to the California State Attorney General Xavier Becerra calling for an investigation of apparent quid pro quo inspired vote trading in order to pass senate bill one possibly violating several state and federal laws in other words even though they have a super majority the democrats had to buy votes to get the gas tax to pass the legislature and she's got the evidence and she is uh you know california state attorney general xavier becerra is a part of the um the the enemy bunch so i, I don't know how far this will go but uh According to her, uh, the governor, Speaker Rendon, and President Pro Tem de Leon doled out $1 billion taxpayer dollars in deals to buy a handful of legislators' votes to pass their gas tax. That, and she wrote, that's not ethical, and I believe if the Attorney General actually looks into this, SB1 will be found illegal. All right, everybody. Thoughts? Let's just start with you, uh, Dennis, since uh, uh, you you are uh, been up on this gas tax thing quite, quite well. What do you think? Do you think this is a possibility? Did they cheat? Did they buy votes? Are they illegal? And if that's the case, is it going to go anywhere with the current leadership and the current uh, legal establishment? Well, it wouldn't surprise me uh, if all the things that uh, she is uh, referring to uh, did take place. I do think that the uh, Democrats uh, uh, will wheel and deal to get their agenda done. Uh, and they aren't going to allow the law to step in the way, but much like the Obama uh, Fast and Furious and the other things that went on, uh, I controlled uh, uh, federal government. Uh, I don't see the California government uh, doing what it ought to do to really look into this. I think they'll turn the blind eye and hope that the complaining Republicans, uh, we don't get any tractions. Uh, I don't think the state attorney general is going to do anything. I mean, uh, well, what does this um, tell the until rest the, the people really get picked up enough to throw these people out and put some uh, some teeth into the legal system again. Uh, and Dennis, just what does this tell the rest it. of the country and the federal government regarding California? Pardon me? What does this tell the rest of the country about California? 
Well, you know, if you're um, a, a liberal, I guess uh, they see us as the uh, birthplace of all the other things that start in California then go national, whether it be immigration or whatever else, uh, whether it be environmental. Uh, there's a lot of things that uh, California starts that goes that way. If you're a conservative, you're probably going to say uh, they wish the San Andreas Fault would fall in the makeup of its mind and let it go into the ocean. We'd be better off without the state. Um, <laughs> okay, a- Alex, uh, you've heard us talk about this. You heard what I said. Uh, you heard about the letter now from <laughs> Melissa Melendez about the Democrats uh, buying votes and doing so illegally, or at least that's the allegation by Melissa Melendez in her letter to Becerra. What do you think? I think that the Democrats have become completely lawless. They, they look at law as an inconvenient technicality, and they're going to continue to, to... I mean, they're thieves. That, that, that's well, the ends justify what, the means, right? Yeah, well, they, they, any money that's laying around is theirs, as far as they're concerned. And uh, they're, they're going to drive the producers out of the state. They've been doing it for years. Uh, that's why our our we don't have the tax money we used to have. Uh, it's it's just a it's, it's a crying shame, and it's it's just because we have elected these idiots and thieves. It's it's real simple. It's, there's not, nothing complicated about it. You know, uh, the founding fathers, the framers of the U.S. Constitution, wrote the Constitution in such a way to keep the political class from doing these kinds of things. There's supposed to be all kinds of checks and balances, but one of those checks is supposed to be we the people, and in California, we the people haven't been doing our job. Uh, We've been falling down on the job, and thank God we have people like Melissa Melendez in the Assembly who's trying to do things to straighten this out. What is your opinion, listeners, Uh, 951 922-3532, 951-922-3532. Nine two two three five three two nine five one nine two two three five three two. If you would like to participate in the conversation, and you know, and this fascinates me because um, this is the exact same move the Democrats made in two thousand three that led to Gray Davis's recall. And well, Doug, it's a, a, a small issue here uh, with okay. the voting trends and the way they are. Um, uh, you know, demographically, uh, Republicans don't have the ability to stop this stuff because, you know, right. there's super majorities in Sacramento. But you're well aware, and I don't have all the notes in front of me, but there's plenty of evidence that our friends with the uh, Election Integrity Project, you know, have brought up. And this is a side issue, but it's still part of the issue. You know, right. the election fraud, it's uh, part of ongoing California problems. Not that they would need it to win it, but it goes on. That right. evidence is never pursued. You know, that's shoved off to the side. And what we're trying to do and maybe get an SB1 uh, reviewed and uh, possibly invalidated due to potential felonies and other things, you know, that's being ignored. And so you have facts, you have rule of law issues, you have breaking of the law that never get prosecuted, and it just emboldens them to keep doing additional things. So it's hard for the... Californians to wake up because most of them aren't aware of all the shenanigans that are going on because they aren't prosecuted and the press turns a, you know, a deaf ear to them. So, well, you know, uh, the Democrats will say that your accusation of voter fraud, uh, regardless of what the evidence says, is a last <laughs> that gasp cry of the losers. The uh, well, the con- the contour- you, you can say that, but the, uh, hey, hang on, Dennis. Hey, hang on, Dennis. Hang on, there Dennis. Alex be- had started a thought. Hang on a sec. Go ahead, Alex. Okay. I, I say the, the contortions that the, that the Democrats are going through here remind me of nothing so much as the as the similar contortions that they went through to pass Obamacare. Uh, you had the Louisiana Purchase, uh, the, the right. Corn Husker thing. Uh, they were buying votes right in front of everybody. So it's and nothing what, new. Uh, well, what you get? Well, now with the Democrats, that's who they are. <clears throat> Uh, and what you get is bad law. We're, we're now, uh, you know, the, at, at this moment, our president is wrestling with this monstrosity that they created uh, simply because there weren't checks and balances in effect. All right, Dennis, what's your thoughts now? Well, no, I'm just I'm saying that, yes, they can they can say that. But, you know, if if you're in a marriage, 
<clears throat> and there's uh, maybe two or three problems that you have, and you're trying to resolve them with your spouse, and right. you've got some big issues and you've got some, some smaller issues, it really doesn't matter if the spouse won't listen. It doesn't matter if it's a huge issue with you, or maybe you want to bring up just a minor one. And if you're getting a deaf ear, it gets to the point where nothing gets resolved, and the legal system does not have the integrity to prosecute uh, people that, that they agree with on the political agenda. So whether it's a throwaway issue, if they want to say that, which is election fraud, uh, or if it's a huge issue, such as uh, uh, stealing uh, money from the taxpayers through a scheme on the gas tax, it's all right. the same sides of the same coin. And well, if, I, if yeah, I think uh, Melissa Melendez is doing this to bring it up. up. It, it brings it Excuse to the me? court of public opinion. That's one of the reasons why I want to talk about it. Isn't yeah. the court of public opinion more important and, and getting it out there, if we can get it out there more, do you think it could possibly lead to a recall? Well, you'd, you'd have to have someone who, that uh, has the ability to light the fire. Either they, uh, they're they a known person and they put their name and weight behind it, and they go, oh, well, so-and-so is saying this. You and I are saying this, but we don't have any clout, so, you know, it doesn't matter what we say. They just ignore right. us and let us go. Are, are, are you talking about a gubernatorial candidate? It could be a gubernatorial candidate. It could just be a high-profile person that would back, you know, your uh, – uh, assembly person and say, uh, I, I agree we need to look into this, whether or not they're going for political office or not. All right. So uh, is there a voice out there louder than Constitution Radio with Douglas V. Gibbs on KMET, however, that's going to be able to get this out there? Uh, Melissa Melendez, uh, as awesome as she is, and she is a loud voice in the assembly, she is a Republican, she's in the minority and super minority at that. Uh, and, and I want to do everything I can to assist her effort in getting this out there. I just don't know if we can. Uh, Alex, any ideas on how we can promote this better? Uh, I, I think that the, the best thing for us to do is what we're doing right now, and that's letting the public know that they're being they're being <laughs> raped, they're being robbed, and to no good uh, end. It's all it's right. all wasted. Well, you know, and as we come up on the first break, I want to remind all your listeners, the second hour today is uh, without commercials. There's no commercials during the second hour break. Uh, we are uh, we are sort of funded. There's a couple hundred dollars that still need to be picked up here, but for the most part, we're funded. Uh, so uh, we're going to be two hours through uh, through July, through, through our three um uh, three-month contract, and and I'm excited that you listeners really came through when we really needed it, and uh, so I appreciate all of you out there, all you listeners, And but I, I want to hear from you. Uh, you can email me at constitutionspeaker at yahoo.com or call in. Call in during the break so we can get you on during the second segment, 951-922-3532, 951 951-922- 3532 and we are up on a break when we return after the break we are going to talk about the election in france and the terrorist attacks that are accompanying it and could it be could it be that not only are these terror attacks giving marine le pen a little bit of a boost but the terrorists want that they want marine le pen in office and they're and they're up upping the ante on terrorism in order to get her there, as a very critical French election takes place tomorrow, and and are the people really waking up in France with the with Le Pen rising up, or are they just being set up? We'll talk about that after the break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> The true patriots of All-Star Collision have been proudly serving the Inland Empire for over 20 years. Built on honesty, integrity, quality, and old-fashioned customer service, we offer lifetime warranties for our work, and every vehicle serviced by All-Star Collision is washed, detailed, 
The headlights polished, fluids are checked and topped off, safety checked, and returned in showroom condition. We offer free estimates, are approved by major insurance companies, and accept all claims for all cars and trucks. We use computerized frame straightening to factory specifications, offer fiberglass body repair and paint, free local pickup and delivery, and after-hours towing. Mention this radio program at drop-off and receive $100 off or a free rental car for up to five days during your repair. Visit us at allstarci.com or at 522 Railroad Street in Corona. Call us at 951-279-9161. We are the kings of wreck and roll. Hi, this is Ed Hoffman, President of Wholesale Capital Corporation, your direct mortgage lender. Real estate prices are means now is the time to buy your next home before they go up. Whether it's a home to live in, a vacation house, or an investment property, we can meet your mortgage financing needs to help you realize the next phase of your American dream. At Wholesale Capital Corporation, we make sure you get a loan that you can afford with terms that work for you. Wholesale Capital welcomes FHA buyers, conventional buyers, jumbo loan buyers, and we proudly help the U.S. military veterans take advantage of the zero down payment VA loan program. Nobody treats veterans better than Wholesale Capital Corporation. Seniors, if you're interested in creating an additional stream of income or just making your mortgage payment go away with a reverse mortgage, Wholesale Capital would love to help you. To speak with a loan officer who has your best interest in mind, call Wholesale Capital at 855-640-2020. That's area code 855-640-2020. Wholesale Capital Corporation, where we can close. What's your constitutional IQ? Your quest to learn the Constitution can be fun for the whole family. Learn about the Constitution as you play the Constitution Quest board game. Learn more at ConstitutionQuest.com. Welcome back. Constitution Radio right here on KMET, 1490 AM. Uh, I am the Constitution Guy, and if you want to check out the podcast of me going through the Constitution, which I put on a a blog talk radio over the last few years, you can go to blogtalkradio.com slash political pistachio, blogtalkradio.com slash political pistachio, and uh, there's a couple years worth of podcasts there of me going through the U.S. Constitution. You can also find them at uh, uh, iTunes. And you can visit the website, politicalpistachio.com and douglasvgibbs.com. ISIS is claiming responsibility for yet another terror attack in France. This one occurred in Paris, resulting in one officer dead, two others seriously wounded. And the uh, incident follows a number of election season attacks around Paris, such as the Louvre Museum in February and one at Orly Airport last month. And with the first round of balloting, Coming up tomorrow, one wonders if these attacks are going to help Marine Le Pen's campaign. She has been adamantly against the current refugee policies in France and is using the danger of Islamic terror as a chief part of her platform. The question is then is not if the rise of more terror will help Le Pen's chances in the upcoming uh, day at the ballot box, but how much it will boost towards her opportunity to be France's next leader. Now, according to the Daily Beast, based on the ideological writings of jihadists such as Abu Musab al-Suri, the terrorist goal is to create violent divisions in Europe's population, pitting Christians, quote-unquote crusaders, against Muslim immigrants and their descendants to the point that there would eventually be a civil war in France and really Europe. In that context, from the jihadist point of view, a Le Pen victory is something devoutly to be wished for. And the terrorist incident that could be the tipping point was all too easy to execute. If that was the case, when the question becomes, would a Le Pen win be playing into their hands, or does the Islamic jihad underestimate the capabilities of Le Pen's administration? So as the questions, is... Her uh, uh, candidacy, something that the jihadists would like, are they committing these terrorist attacks, do you think, possibly, uh, in order to get her there? Or are they underestimating what she's capable of? Is she truly the French Trump and is willing to take it to them in ways that they just don't expect? We'll start with you, Alex. Go ahead. Yeah, my feeling is that she's a, an unknown quantity as, as far as we're concerned. Uh, well, you know, Trump was a- too, right? 
Pardon? Trump was as well, was he not? That's exactly that. That was what I was where I was going. Was was Trump was also an unknown quantity, but. As I said long ago, God gives us the presidents that we need at the particular moment, the exact right. person. Okay. And uh, we've got to have faith in God that, that he's, he's going to play this hand uh, well. Okay, Dennis, uh, is God God's hand on this? Uh, is are the jihadists happy that she's in the lead, or is she, they are or are they underestimating Marine Le Pen? Well, you know, I I believe in God, and I believe that He is active in the affairs of man. And I also know that the wheat and the tares grow together, and the sun and the rain falls on the righteous and the just. So we also get to stew in our own mistakes. So uh, the rising problems in Fr- France. Um, uh, are uh, uh, severe, as really all of Europe is. Um, I can see, due to the philosophy of uh, Islamics, that uh, they are gearing up for this fight. They relish the fight, the final jihad, if you will. And uh, you could say that they want Marine in there because she will help facilitate the fight that they are all excited to have because they're certain they will win. Um, uh, how much effect they'll really have in it, I don't know. you got to have a citizenship uh, that uh, uh, can see uh, clearly what the threats are. And right. uh, it seems half the countries are all still in denial. I don't know if it's kumbaya uh, mentality. I don't know if they just don't want to accept it. I don't know if they uh, just can't see it. They think that it's white culture guilt. I mean, I, I don't know uh, fully all of this, but... You know, you have the same problem there in regard to their threats as the threats that went on for eight years under Obama that the U.S. Uh, wouldn't recognize, and the same stuff that's going on in California that we already talked about that the citizenry doesn't want to react to. Uh, well, you know, it, it, well, well, well now here in the United States, whatever. though, we don't have it as bad as Europe. I mean, the <laughs> percentage of the Muslim population is much greater there. No, I understand that, but, you know, Obama was doing all he could to get more seats planted here so that 10 right. years from now we can close the gap on it. I mean, we're basically on the same path, uh, and if you speak out against it, you know, you're a Islamophobe, a xenophobe. Right. You know, a, a, America isn't the culture of the white. America is the culture of liberty and responsibility. And that's what drives this country. You know, when you get people in the country from any ethnic group, any religious group, that want the government to take care of them and and uh, react negatively to the Constitution, uh, it's not xenophobic, it's not Islamophobic. It's basically just saying, hey, you guys don't understand the engine that drives this country. It's like putting diesel in a gasoline engine. You right, know, right, it right. won't work. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what we're doing to our country right now. Well, and the and, uh, thing is, we aren't as far along as uh, Europe is. I mentioned that a moment ago, uh, and I'm a firm believer that our fate, uh, we can watch to see what our fate is going to be if we continue down this path by simply watching Europe. And unlike the United States, the fate of France is considered to be all but written from a demographics point of view. The yep. Muslim birth rate, for one, is much higher than that of the French and, 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 and any other population for that matter. Muslim population in France is estimated at around 6 million today. It has been suggested it could grow to 12 million by 2020. With the French population close to 65 million people, that makes the percentage of the Muslims in France they, at just under 10%. In the United States, the Muslim population is roughly 3.3 million, which means that Muslims make up about 1% percent of the total u.s population uh we have about 322 million people or at least we did in 2015 and in both countries those numbers will likely rise rapidly over the next few years now here's the thing with france's muslim population at 10 percent of the population the muslim population is more active when muslims approach 10 percent of the population they tend to increase lawlessness as a means of complaint about their conditions dr peter hammond has a book out there called terror slavery and islam let me repeat that dr peter hammond terror slavery and islam and he has a whole list of like the percentages when uh the muslim population is at two percent five percent ten percent fifteen percent twenty percent what does it do at these different levels 
And uh, he indicated once again that 10%, they tend to increase lawlessness. In Paris, we're already seeing car bombings. Any non-Muslim action offends Islam and results in uprisings and threats. And we've seen this in Amsterdam also with the opposition of the Mohammed cartoons and films about Islam. And in Europe, it's only going to get worse. Hammond continues that the violence increases when the Muslim population reaches 20%. And remember, that's a possibility in, in the next a matter of a few years. And after, according to uh, Hammond, after reaching 20%, nations can expect hair-trigger rioting, jihad militia formations, sporadic killings, and the burnings of Christian churches and Jewish synagogues. In the United States, with the Muslim population just over 1%, according to Hammond, as long as it remains under 2%, the Muslims will be seen primarily as a peace-loving minority and not as a threat to the other citizens. So, and, and Alex, I'm going to go with uh, you next on this. That means that the hope is to keep the percentage below 2% and never allow them to increase their numbers beyond 2%. Uh, now, so either we need to somehow stop those numbers or limit those numbers or reduce those numbers, or the Crusaders, us, can... Once again, throw Islam out of the West, which is what happened back during the Crusades after 400 years of Islamic attack. Uh, so the problem is with, with that is that the liberal left positions are and our continued willingness to buy Middle Eastern oil um, and the rise of political correctness, that all stands in the way. So now Dr. Hammond reminds us, Islam is not a religion, nor is it a cult. In form, it is a complete, total, 100% system of life. Islam has religious, legal, political, economic, social, and military components. The religious component is a beard for all of the other components, unquote. So their takeover of a country begins when the population of Muslims reaches a critical mass, and they begin to agitate for various privileges. So open, free, democratic societies, yes, I know we are a Republic, but democratic societies are particularly vulnerable when politically correct, tolerant, and culturally diverse societies agree to Muslim demands for their religious privileges. Some of the other components tend to creep in as well, or at least that's what he said. So, how do we combat Islam knowing all of that, Alex? Well, I'm not as worried about Le Pen as I am about the the psychology of the European public. Right. Uh, I've, I've watched as a teacher, I've watched our children being brainwashed uh, on this peace thing and on this America is always wrong thing. And and uh, you got to you got to walk a mile in the other guy's shoes and all this kind of garbage. Uh, what I'm seeing on TV right now is a flotilla of boats. Uh, these are brand new boats, apparently built for the purpose that are shuttling uh, uh, Muslims from Africa to France and Italy. Uh, they're, they're, they're not, they're, they're, they're calling is that they're supposed to be rescuing people who are trying to escape Syria uh, in, in inadequate boats, and, and therefore they, they take them, they're not taking them back to Africa. They're right. they're going back and forth like a shuttle line, and they're and they're they're transporting huge numbers of Muslims into Europe, and the Europeans are still uh, sitting on their hands about all the rape and, and crime and 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 rioting that's going on. Uh, my hope is that somehow the violence that they that they're practicing will wake people up. Uh, I don't hold out any great hope, but uh, it's, it's all we've got. Right, and, and we've watched uh, when it comes to these percentages, what goes on in these different countries, and we've seen it go on. And, I mean, look, look at the Middle East, and I've been uh, explaining it to people. It has nothing to do with race and location as much as it does political ideology, political system. And uh, to kind of piggyback on John Hancock's uh, distortion of history, presentation who by the way he's going to be the speaker at the constitution association meeting on may 6th go to constitutionassociation.com to learn more but uh to piggyback on his little presentation 
Uh, he talks about how in Africa, for example, the two biggest, strongest economies in Africa are South Africa and Botswana. And those are the two systems that have hung on to the uh, political system and the economic system based on the English-Saxon principles uh, that we're supposed to be under, but we've been moving away from uh, because of the influence of the uh, Marxist left. The rest of uh, Africa, starvation, violence, civil war, you name it. And they are under the control of either Islamic or Marxist systems. But yet, everything's wonderful in Botswana and South Africa, or, is, or at least wonderful compared to the rest of the continent. So, um, so here we are now. We're looking at these percentages, and as the percentage of population gets higher for Islam, they get more agitated, they get more active, they start doing more. Dennis, how do we stop it? Well, you need to be a nation of laws. And again, right. you, we can go back to the California legislature and how they're going around stuff, you know, like your representative is talking about. But if it's 1%, 2%, and you think everything's quiet on the uh, Muslim front, and then when it gets up to 5 or 10%, they start getting more active. You know, Sharia is not compatible with the United States Constitution, nor is it compatible with a lot of the uh, governments in France and other places in Europe. So if you just prosecute them, you know, arrest them, deport them, uh, put them in jail, do whatever you're going to do to them, enforce the law, then uh, they won't be as emboldened. If you quit letting them come in when you know that they're going to uh, have that problem, you know, then you're being painted politically incorrect. But uh, you just need to enforce the law, right? Whether it be on our politicians in California, whether it be at the federal level, whether it be on people that come in here, whether it be immigration law, and that's the problem. We don't enforce our laws. We allow the uh, law-breaking to happen. We allow Sharia to, to have balkanization throughout Europe to where government officials can't go into certain areas because their lives are at risk. Uh, you just can't allow that foothold. And the way you do that is you enforce the law 100% day to day to day. And we refuse to do that, and we allow it to grow until it gets untenable, and then your society is at, uh, at risk and you've got potential civil war. And that's exactly what the strategy is in Europe. And if they could do it in the United States, they'd do it here as well. And, and let me uh, remind everybody, during World War II, when we were at war with Germany and, and Italy and Japan, uh, there were limitations and prohibitions regarding immigration into this country from those countries. We didn't do that because we were being insensitive or racist or unfair or whatnot. We, we did that in this country because we couldn't tell the good from the bad. What's the difference now? ISIS and other Islamic Jihad organizations have declared war on us, and even though we haven't declared war back, we don't even think our leaders even realize it's a war. Uh, why can't we do the same? We are at war. Their spies, their infiltrators, their agitators are coming into our country. And yes, I agree. Some of those refugee may, populations may have some families and wonderful people that really just want to get out of. The horrible place. Well, number one, refugees are not supposed to become permanent citizens. They're supposed to go home when whatever's going on in their home is done. Number two, there are Doug, dangerous are elements mixed into that population. Why do we want them in our country to cause a disruption during this war? Go ahead, Alex. That was Dennis. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dennis. I was, I was just saying, why are they fleeing? Like you said, they're fleeing Marxists, they're fleeing Sharia, they're fleeing, right. you know, you you got to fix the problem there. If you don't fix the problem there, you know, they're going to just keep fleeing. It, but the world won't recognize that these are nice, not nice places to live. Right. Know, and they're so bringing that problem, the problem with them because the jihadists are problem. mixed into the population. Look at these no-go zones. Look at these refugee camps. Look at the terrorism that Sweden has been going on. By the way, they've had more... Uh, come into their country, more refugees into their country than any other European country, and it cracked me up how uh, the left painted uh, Trump as some type of idiot when he talked about the problems of Sweden, and then the very next day Sweden confirmed yeah. everything that Trump was saying with a terror attack. Uh, leftist policies, be they Muslim or socialism, don't work. They are failures, and, and they destroy societies. Just look at Venezuela. I, I got a, a, a news flash for the audience, and that is that we might as well give up on arguing 
or debating or trying to educate liberals. The liberals have have voluntarily become uh, robots uh, mm-hmm. and zombies. They're not listening. You, when you talk to them, uh, you might as well be, be throwing marbles at a kite. You're not going to you're not going to make any progress. Uh, well, they're performing all of the the warnings of history. The warnings of history have shown that when you have a uh, when you have a dictator that wants bigger government or or wants uh, everybody to be the same mind and, and and be no different from each other and gender neutra- n- neutral, or when, when uh, violence is the way to uh, silence your opposition, that's all tyranny. And they yet they do all these things and they call their opposition tyranny. Well, the the. Model is is the 1930s when the League of Nations uh, couldn't stop the spread of fascism. Uh, they couldn't stop Mussolini and 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 Hitler and Tojo from taking over huge territories, and it's the same reason. Well, these organizations were run by liberals. Uh, the UN is run by by liberals today. It's it's an, an enemy of ours, uh, right in our in the in the heart of our our most important city. Uh, it it just is insane that, that that we we put up with this stuff. But it, the the cause is liberalism. More people have died from from the effects of liberalism than any other cause. And that said, we got to go to break. But when we return, speaking of liberalism, we're going to talk about North Korea. And much more when we return. Don't go anywhere. You got a dent in your door, a scratch in your fender, or a scratch in your door and a dent in your fender. If you need uh, auto detailing, if you need fire shooting decals on the side of your car, if you need, need a rally stripe right down the middle of your hard top, I don't care what it is. The Patriots at All Star Collision are the place you want to go. They're the only place to go. 522 Railroad Street in Corona. Uh, web address allstarci.com to see all that they do and what they're all about. Phone number 951 279 916. One All Star Collision to the Kings. Hi, this is Ed Hoffman, President of Wholesale Capital Corporation, your direct mortgage lender. Real estate prices are still low, which means now is the time to buy your next home before they go up. Whether it's a home to live in, a vacation house, or an investment property, we can meet your mortgage financing needs to help you realize the next phase of your American dream. At Wholesale Capital Corporation, we make sure you get a loan that you can afford with terms that work for you. Wholesale Capital welcomes FHA buyers, conventional buyers. Jumbo Loan Buyers, and we proudly help the U.S. military veterans take advantage of the Zero Down Payment VA Loan Program. Nobody treats veterans better than Wholesale Capital Corporation. Seniors, if you're interested in creating an additional stream of income or just making your mortgage payment go away with a reverse mortgage, Wholesale Capital would love to help you. To speak with a loan officer who has your best interest in mind, call Wholesale Capital at 855-640-2020. That's area code 855-640-2020. Wholesale Capital Corporation, where we can close. The Banning Beaumont Cherry Valley Tea Party meets every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. for informal breakfast and discussion. And they meet each month on the second Thursday at 5 p.m., all at the Farms House Restaurant in Banning. Listen to interesting speakers, learn about our Constitution with our free classes, enjoy friendly discussions, and informal dining. Come join us. For more information, call Glenn Stoll, 951 316 3843. And now, back to our program. Welcome back, Constitution Radio with Douglas V. Gibbs. Uh, Thank you for spending some time with us. Real quick before we go to the next topic here, uh, the Riverside County Republican Party has a new location, new headquarters. It's no longer Moreno Valley. They've moved it to Temecula, 28120 Jefferson Avenue, Temecula, California, 28120 Jefferson Avenue, Temecula, California. You can call their office at 951-206-5502. I was there for the grand opening on Thursday night after I was done with my Constitution class there in Temecula. I missed the ribbon cutting, but I was there to 
shake some hands, talk to some people. There was an offer for me to move my Constitution classes to the Republican Party headquarters. Difficulty was, one of the nights that I would need to do it, uh, they have uh, something else planned uh, regularly. And uh, so that would leave only two classes a month there. And for the sake of consistency, I'm going to keep it at Faith Armory Gun Shop. For those of you who don't know about the classes, All-Star Collision in Corona on Tuesday nights at 6 o'clock, 522 Railroad Street, Corona, California. All-Star is also our one of our advertisers, as you just heard during the break, and a great supporter for everything that we do here. And the Temecula class is on every Thursday night except for the second Thursday night of the month at at Faith Armory Gun Shop, 41669 Winchester Road in Temecula. That second Thursday night, I'm up in Banning at the Farm's House Restaurant right off of the Highland Springs off-ramp. Thursday, first, second Thursday night of each month, 5 o'clock, Banning Beaumont Cherry Valley Tea Party, bbcvteaparty.com. And if you didn't catch the Conservative Voice radio program this morning at 8 o'clock, Wonderful thing, we have podcasts. So after you've done listening to this program, go to KMET1490AM.com, find the Conservative Voice radio show, of which I am one of four hosts on, and check out the podcast. Good program. Okay, now now that I've got uh, some of that out of the way, let's talk about North Korea. Uh, you know, have you ever seen a map, a satellite map of North Korea and South Korea at night, guys? Uh, I'm sure you have, Alex. Oh yeah, that's that's a uh, an icon. You got you got the blacked out area of North Korea and the lit up like a Christmas tree area of South Korea. But logic and and facts mean nothing to the people that are that we're opposing. Well, you know, I've actually talked to leftists and they think that communism is a right wing idea. I'm dead serious. A lot of them th- actually think that 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 you. As a conservative constitutionalist, want to take away their rights to, you know, very important rights like the right to, you know, uh, have a, a gay marriage, the right to uh, end the ba- the life of a baby in their room, things like, like that. And so you're actually the dictatorial uh, uh, one. Um, you know, you go back to uh, uh, what, what is that that movie um, with the uh, V? The V stands for C V is for. Uh, Oh, I can't remember now uh, the name of the movie, but it's this uh, you know masked hero of revolution, right. and yeah. he's uh, f- fighting against a religious-based totalitarian system. That that's what a lot of the people on the left think. They've been so brainwashed that they don't realize <clears throat> that what they think their opposition is is exactly who they're supporting, which is you know strong you know uh, uh, control through governmental systems. Uh, now. Kim Jong-un, the best-fed member of the North Korea's population, the pudgy dictator, continues to defy the world regarding his request and his quest for nuclear ascendancy. And the Korean War, that exploded shortly after the end of World War II, it's never ended. His population has never felt that that war ended, and really technically it didn't. There was a ceasefire at the end of that uh, conflict. Uh, The war really never ended. And... um, and they've been waiting for the United States to come back and try to uh, invade again. They've been preparing for it. Okay, now, communism has changed its form uh, to behind the scenes rather than being out there in the, in the open now. In, in, and it's working to dismantle the West in the name of liberalism and progressive policies. And so, on. But the Korean War still rages on for North Korea. The North Koreans worship their leader and expect the United States to come back. And he is now saying that the United States under Trump is going to do so, and the rhetoric is getting quite interesting uh, from that part of the country. And what what's interesting is Kim Jong-un, in my opinion, may have passed the point of no return. His ego and his promises to a starving people may require him to finish what he has started here. So he continues to up the ante, even when he doesn't have the chess pieces in place to carry out his threats. North Korea state media has warned the United States of a super mighty preemptive strike, a threat that came shortly after um, after U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson said the United States was looking at ways of, to bring pressure to bear on North Korea over its nuclear program. North Korea is making these threats with a robust attitude of having the means without having 
They have. They are making these threats with the robust attitude of having the means to carry out such a threat, even though it is less than a week since their la- latest failed missile test. So, um, so here's my question: Are we headed for war, or is North Korea nothing more than a yapping dog that got off its leash, and China better reel it in? Go ahead, Dennis. Well, you, it's totally unpredictable. You really don't know what uh, uh, Kim Jong Un will do. I mean, will he um, go ahead and fire weapons, which he has, artillery and other um, uh, missiles and stuff, into Japan yeah. and hey, South he's perfectly Korea? Perfectly capable of hitting South Korea. I mean, Seoul yeah. I is mean, right there, I mean, uh, uh, close to the border, and that's a big city. Yeah, miles. and you know he's got a big army. I mean, uh, I just. Uh, I uh, wouldn't put anything past him. Am I worried about him reaching uh, California or other places? With the, no, I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about atomic stuff uh, other than within the territorial confines within his capability. Uh, right. And he's deceived his people all along, and uh, I don't know if he has a death wish or just wants to uh, uh, survive uh, and, and give the country to his son for the fourth generation, but right. you know, he's not doing a very good job of uh, uh, having probability high on that. Hey, uh, the key uh, here has got to be Alex China. That, I mean, China needs well, to step in, but I don't know oh, if they will. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, but, but China, I, I think, is just as nervous. Uh, Alex, that big display, the huge dip- display of missiles on parade uh, at the uh, North Korean capital, uh, what was it, last week? Uh, you think those missiles uh, on parade were actually foam or paper mache? Uh, they might well be. Apparently, uh, reports are now coming in that the missiles that the Russians had on their trailers uh, in, in times gone by, uh, those missiles were actually paper mache, and uh, they had to tie them down with rope to keep them from, from lifting off the trailer in the high wind. Uh, <laughs> But my, my, my problem is that the relatives I have that are left-wing, when I try to make sense to them about this stuff, they redefine all the terms. In other words, I'll say, what about uh, uh, Pol Pot? What about uh, uh, Kim Il-sung? What about the, the 100 million murders? And they t- in, invariably they'll tell me, that's not socialism. That's people pretending to be socialists. That's uh, that's that's uh, conservatives. Uh, so you a right wing fascism is what they'll call it, right? It's 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 anything but 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 socialism. Uh, it's it, it's in it's insane. Uh, and uh, as I said last week, uh, I think that perhaps no matter how horrible the the, the prospect is. Uh, we'd be better off with Kim Il Sung trying uh, Kim, Kim Il Un, Kim, well, whatever his name is, uh, <laughs> Kim Young Un or Un. Yeah. He's the uh, Un dictator. I, 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 that that guy, uh, if he's, well, he's going to gonna launch an he, attack, let him launch it now when he can't reach it. Uh, well, he's he, and he's a kid, and he feels like he has something to prove, and he's. Doesn't have the maturity of of negotiation or patience or anything like that. All he knows is what he knows, and he's itching to prove himself because uh, you know he's been laughed at. His missiles have been uh, blowing up off the launch pad. He can't get it up. He's uh, got premature explosion going on, so he's got you know projectile dysfunction. Uh, and well, I, according I to the Free Beacon writer Bill Gertz, North Korea is making rapid progress on developing submarine-launched ballistic missiles and missile-firing uh, submarines. It, it, he based his assessment on a report by the United Nations Panel of Experts. Um, but I don't trust the UN. I think they're going to say he's got more than he may have. Well, I, I look at it in terms of five or ten years. In five or ten years, we won't have any options left. Right. Uh, they're they're going to be uh, Iran and North Korea are going to be in a position to to s- send real nukes into real cities. Uh, right, right, yeah. Uh, reports say that North Korea is about four years away from an ICBM that can reach mainland America. We should have stopped them a long time ago. Well, isn't that, that what uh, wasn't that what MacArthur and Patton said about Soviet Union and China after World War II? 
Exactly, and, and MacArthur was one of the great military geniuses of history, not just of America, but of, in history. And he was right then, and, and, and we're paying for it now. Well, you know, in, in an effort to rein in their barking rat dog, the uh, Chinese are stating that they're going to halt crude oil exports in, to North Korea. Now, I thought that they had said that they had stopped sending a crude oil into North Korea back in 2014. Apparently, they've been continuing to send in oil off the books. Uh, and, and North Korea's complete dependence on China for their crude oil I mean, you know, if if that flow stops, that could that could uh, resolve maybe a lot of issues if China's willing to work with us on this. Now, now uh, Trump seemed to have a pretty good meeting with President Chinese President Xi Jinping, uh, and, and and they both agree that China, North, North Korea is a serious threat. Um, and Trump has been urging China to use its influence over the North. Uh, did he use the art of the deal? Do you think is is he maneuvering for you know promises that you know by China to go after you know uh, North Korea or, or is this something that uh, may have to result in a military confrontation? What do you think, Dennis? Well, you know when you were talking about the uh, uh, re- removing all the materials and. Uh, and uh, China supposedly stopping their their shipments. It reminds me of the situation with Syria that uh, you know they got rid of all their uh, uh, gas uh, uh, weapons, um, all that uh, back with China, and then now it's parsing words when they say, well, they did get rid of all of their quote known or confirmed or whatever the phrase was. That's just what's that mean? That means the known was 50% of the arsenal, so we got rid of 50% of the known, but they kept the unknown. I mean, you know, what good is that? You know, you're, you're, you're throwing something out to make people have a false sense of security. And so what China says, they're going to rein back, you know, the, the oil. They've been doing it off book, you know, for some period of time. Uh, well, here's something I want everybody to think about as we get ready to go to break, because we're about a minute away from break. Uh, China has deployed 150,000 troops to their border, and Russia has moved troops and armored vehicles to their border with North Korea. So something's going on. They know something that we don't know, I think. If you want to well, me... chime in, no, if you want to chime in, 922-3532. That's 951-AREA, 922-3532. we got to go to break. It's a hard break, but after this break, we'll be back with Dennis, Alex, and yours truly, Douglas V. Gibbs, on Constitution Radio, right here on KMET 1490 AM. See ya on the flip side. Welcome back. Time for the second hour. Constitution Radio right here on KMET 1490 AM. Glad to have you. If you would like to call in, participate, 951-922-3532. No ads this second hour. This is a listener paid for hour, the second hour here. So I would love to hear from you. It's your hour after all. 951-922-3532. And we were talking about uh, Korea, communism, Soviet Union, China, so on and so forth. And off mic, there was uh, some thoughts, and, and uh, basically the response was, well, let's talk about that on the show. So, Dennis, uh, clue us in what, what, with what you were saying off mic uh, about the situation with North Korea and so forth. Well, North Korea is under the uh, high influence. Uh, I'm not saying that Kim Jong Un would not do something without clearing it with China, but um, you know they, they very much are under their control. Syria very much uh, beholden to uh, to Russia, and right. what I don't know in all this is um, 
you've got Putin and, and Xi, they can, you know, make nice and shake hands and say we want to have a good relationship. Meanwhile, they can have their puppets, uh, you know, do the dirty work and uh, entangle the United States, you know, into into concerns. Uh, they can. Uh, you've got the uh, the Navy of the U.S. You have all of the types of intelligence stuff going on. They can watch how the U.S. is reacting, not through their own stuff, even though Russia and China have gotten into airspace close to us and Japan. Um, but but I don't know if uh, China is really supported uh, privately, but publicly disavowing what's going on in, in uh, North Korea uh, or not. And, and nothing would really surprise me. We really don't know. So, you know, we're hearing in the news that China is just as concerned and, you know, and, and agrees with Trump that North Korea is a danger. Are you suggesting that it may be possible this all part of the big communist plan and and uh, North Korea may be doing exactly what China would like to see? Uh, you, you don't know. I, I would think there's some blend in that. I mean, if China didn't agree with this, you know, uh, communists generally are, are fairly ruthless. Uh, you right. know, they, they, could, they could change it in a heartbeat. They could simply throw the, uh, the third generation guys out and, you know, have, have a people's republic. Just like he got elected, they could have an election there, even though it would be contrived. <laughs> but, you know, they aren't right. fixing a problem that's under their own control, just like the U.S. hasn't fixed its problems when it, you know, whether it was health care, immigration. Nobody wants to fix their problems. Nobody wants to uh, take responsibility. About, but uh, this international ahead, stuff. Uh, ahead, Alex. Uh, yeah, about, about 10 years ago, there was a minor scandal uh, when an uh, analyst translated a... Uh, magazine from the New People's Army, because there was an article in there, you know, this is the official publication of the, of the Red Chinese government, there was an article in there that said that war with the United States, military confrontation was inevitable, and that the purpose of everything that they were doing as, as the New People's Army was, was to prepare for that struggle. Uh, that gives, gives me pause. Well, and the thing is, too, is, you know, the aggressiveness of the rhetoric has always been there. question is, will they act upon it? I mean, for God's sake, since the 60s, the textbooks that the students have in China, uh, Australia is labeled New China. So so, so this kind of, uh, uh, you know, Soviet Union, same thing. And, 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 of course, the people don't know the truth in North Korea, you know, is... They're starving to death, and they're told that they're doing much better than the rest of the world, and you know, because the capitalist pigs are starving even worse, kind of thing. All right, uh, any thoughts on North Korea or the possibility of war before we go on to uh, Mr. Ferguson's uh, book review this week? It seems to me that our big hope is that China has become rich enough that they have something to to uh, to lose, and and that. The, they they might just decide to to get up uh, uh, some rationality and forget the apocalypse. The question is, <laughs> did, did they or, 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 or do they or don't they? Well, and and if they got to this point, of course, by injecting capitalism into their communist system, you know, they they don't don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they became a capitalist country. Uh, but they have injected some free market ideas into the system, and they had to to save their economy and became the fastest growing economy as a result. But it's still a communist country. It's still an iron fist there. Don't know. All right, um, Alex, and, and I want to try to keep you on track this time with the book because uh, people are very interested in the book, and I want you to uh, spend the next 10 minutes really trying to give the audience a reason to purchase the book you're talking about. Why should they purchase the book you've been reading? Give the name and the name of the uh, title of the book and the name of the author, please. The title of the book is Political Pilgrims, Travels of Western Intellectuals to the Soviet Union, China, and Cuba. Uh, and I'd, I'd like to clarif clarify one thing. Uh, last weekend you asked, did this particular piece of information that I came up with come from that book? And in fact, uh, it, it, it didn't. Uh, these these uh, reviews that I give are not book reports. The book report would limit itself to the book itself. 
right. my book review is based on on the the book itself primarily, and then when I think there needs to be a connecting of the dots, uh, uh, I, I I fill in from from my vast knowledge of of, of uh, the the communist movement. Uh, the last time you were here, I think you saw a wall of books that I have access to. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, fair enough, fair enough. But at the same time, uh, we, we want these people to purchase these books, so we want to uh, try to keep these uh, reviews uh, book-heavy a little bit, um, at least, um, when we connect the dots. Uh, now, that said, this individual spent time in communist countries, Right. The writer uh, the, of the book, the, I mean. The, the writer of the book. I'm not that familiar with the writer of the book. Uh, what, what he's doing is is uh, kind of like like me. He's he's uh, researching and analyzing. Uh, okay. Okay. Now, the 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 point is, the point of this book is that the history of world communism is a horror story of poverty, slavery, starvation, and genocide. Uh, yet its adherents right. are as loyal as any religious sect. Yeah, and it's, course, that's something that we've been talking about earlier. I've been saying has nothing to do with race and location, everything to do with political system. And going back to Botswana and South Africa as your examples there in Africa. Well, it, 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 while it's, it's possible to reject one's own, one's own society without becoming favorable to another, it is psychologically difficult and rare to do so, because it it generates a sense of helplessness. Okay. Uh, intellectuals critical of their society must believe that the social institutions superior to those in their own society can be created. So when they when they, for instance, during the Vietnam War, when when the leftists turned against the American government, uh, they automatically. Decided that the, the that the Viet Cong must be good guys, uh, and and uh, Lo Doc To and Ho Chi Minh and all these people became heroes, uh, when in fact they were just murderers. Right. So uh, another another path they they follow is that they idealize abortive revolutions or social movements, which were not given a chance to go stale or become oppressive. For instance, Abens in Guatemala, uh, most Dick, most, it's hard to pronounce these names, most of Dick in, uh, Iran, uh, Allende in Chile. Uh, when you look at Cuba, for instance, if Castro's re- revolution had not succeeded, uh, they, they would have painted him in glowing terms. Uh, he would have created a, a, a society of abundance and freedom and all this. It, it's nonsense, but they 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 trade in this. This is their their game. Uh, one of the factors is that they do not allow photographic evidence of their atrocities. Uh, for instance, I have never seen stateside a photograph of an atrocity committed by. The Viet Cong was the North Vietnamese communist. Uh, we have uh, the, the picture of the guy in the, in the plaid shirt getting his brains blown out. We have the little girl running down the road uh, having been uh, napalmed. Uh, it's, it, and it's perfectly all right uh, to present pictures of full frontal nudity of a child or uh, a man getting murdered. Actually, he wasn't murdered. He was, he was legally executed because he was a terrorist and he just murdered a family. But a man being executed, those pictures would ordinarily be verboten. But they they ignore those those standards and rules in order to present America as as something uh, abhorrent. Uh, it, it's just it, it, it's it's more than just a little frustrating. Uh, but they they convince themselves. Uh, by the way, one of the people that I talk about here, one of these p- political pilgrim, pilgrims was John Dewey. John Dewey is the guy who founded the American educational system. Yeah, and he was uh, president of the Psychological American Psychology Association before that. So he, he, he's the source of a lot of our problems. It makes, it makes, makes sense 
when you when you check back that way, uh, it was a, uh, George Bernard Shaw said, "Tomorrow I leave this land of hope and return to our western countries of despair." He was so uh, convinced of the, the superiority of the Soviet system that as he was entering Soviet territory in a train, he took a, a, a supply of provisions, food, uh, that he had brought with him and threw it out of the door, threw it onto the track, uh, because he, he, he would have nothing but abundance in Russia. That food could have saved the lives of uh, at least one starving family. But uh, his, his nonsense, his, his uh, delusions were, were uh, capable of, of causing that kind of, of insanity. Uh, now, uh, are you familiar, uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, Alex, are you familiar with uh, the Foundation series by Isaac Asimov? No. Okay, and, and the Foundation series by Isaac Asimov, it's a future psychohistory kind of thing. And basically he said that based on history, you can predict what, what's going to happen in the future. And that all empires fall, and then after following empires, there is going to be, uh, or any strong civilization, the, then the uh, civilization goes into a, a period of bar barbarity. barbarity. And then after the barbarism, then a new strong system will rise up and then civilization will be held together based on that particular empire or system. Um, using that idea, we can look back in history where the civilized world centered around a particular system that went from being a, a good and fair system, a republic, so to speak, into an empire, and then finally crumbled upon itself, and then uh, a period of barbarity followed, uh, Roman Empire being one of them that comes to mind. So, based on that idea, if Islam and the socialists tear down what created the, uh, the West, basically, as the primary and strongest civilization on this planet and as the system that has made this planet prosper, then we have a period of barbarity to follow. He also, in his books, uh, had a character called the mule. What the mule represented was that, that, that thorn in the side that appears. No matter what, how much you plan, how much you prepare, and how much you want to make sure everything goes right, there's always a mule that screws up your plans. So now here's my question based on all that. When it comes to the liberal left, is Islam their mule? Uh, I'm not sure, but what, what I am sure of is that this is the this period now is the end of history. Uh, this this is this is the last game. Uh, if we lose this one, uh, there won't be any climbing out of it. There won't there won't be another cycle. All right, Dennis, uh, uh, based on what Alex just said, is this end game, or do we have a chance to turn this around or maybe be uh, Cicero and create a, uh, a model for a future generation to use to pull this thing out of the muck and start the cycle all over again? Well, if you didn't believe that there was an opportunity to improve, I guess we'd all be holing up in our uh, uh, shacks with our food supplies and, uh, you know, waiting for Armageddon to show, but... Uh, uh, you know, I, I think of so many of these uh, movies and TV shows where, you know, the bad guys are taking over and everybody's underground and they're fighting against all this technology. And, and it is tougher now because, you know, I mean, the government's listening to all of our cell phone conversations. They can go through all your emails. Um, right. But uh, uh, there is a, uh, a spirit within man that is God-given that uh, yearns, you know, to be free. And uh, regrettably, there's the carnal side of man that, you know, craves power and, uh, you know, likes to uh, um, inflict for whatever reason, you know, on, on the masses and being in control. And I, I do agree that it's a lot more challenging now. And if the U.S. were to go, 
uh, it'd be a dark night for a long time. And one last comment, then I'll let you guys take it back, is China and Russia owe the success of their communistic slash capitalistic uh, success, which neither one of them had. It was only because of the United States and the Western world. If, well, sure. if, if China couldn't in- export to the U.S. and to Europe, you know, they'd all be sitting there starving, you know. Uh, so we have granted them life. You know, if we hadn't reached out to them, you know, they still would have been having their five-year plans like Mao was doing. Right. And well, well, they're every parasitic, five years. and they need the capitalism to survive. And I don't know Yeah, but that. if we were to quit trading with them, you know, they'd, they'd go out in a heartbeat. And right. then they'd have to really reveal themselves. Well, if we quit buying the Eastern know. oil, you know, the uh, Muslim scourge would be a bunch of nomads on camels. I mean, you know, do you agree, listener? Do you agree? 951-922-3532. 951-922-3532. Uh, go back to Alex. Alex, yeah. you know, um, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to you and 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 to Dennis and and thinking about all this, and then I realize, you know, I'm not sure which is which we be more worried about: the liberal left scourge, the communists, and so on and so forth, or Islam. I mean, Islam is definitely creating more uh, disruptions. I mean, you know, look at Fresno just recently. You had a guy in Fresno during a shooting spree, killed three people while shouting Alu Akbar. But then you bring in the leftists uh, from that, and they say, well, the guy was shouting Alu Akbar, but uh, we uh, uh, do not believe the shooting spree was tied to terrorism. Well, parenthetically, uh, aside from trade, the Marxist world has benefited uh, from, from, uh, from stealing all of our technology. And I mean all of it. Uh, they're doing it now. Uh, they're an unproductive uh, system. They could not create what we have. Uh, they've been they've been parasiting uh, like like uh, hagfish. Uh, and, and just as, as ugly. Uh, well, you know, it's it's funny because I was talking to an ex-Muslim friend of mine, and he uh, had gone home to you know visit and talk to one of his uncles, and he says to his uncle, he says. Uh, do you not understand, Uncle, that Muslim Islam has given you none of the things that you have? That your phone, that your car, that your radio, your tele that all comes from either the United States or the West. It comes from the system of prosperity that is in place because of the West. And his uh, uncle's response was, yes, but Allah allowed them and enabled them to do such. Well, to, that, that, that is a... Uh, uh potent message, but to return to my book review, uh, Reverend Hewlett Johnson detected in the Soviet regime the highest realization of Christian principle. So you've got delusion operating uh, on all sides. Uh, The intellectual loves humanity, but he he despises and is intolerant of individuals. well, the the the, uh, the screenplay writer of Lincoln called uh, individualism a psychosis. It is a psychotic belief that individualism is is uh, more important than collectivism. And the, both the, the Islamists and the Marxists believe that. Uh, this book is full of people rejecting the idea of individualism as, as a fascist concept. Uh, Lincoln Stevens was a very famous uh, turncoat. He said, I am a a patriot for Russia. The future is there. Russia will win out. It will save the world. That is my belief. But I don't want to live there. Uh, (laughs) Well, you know, you're talking about people living there, you know, Calexit. And I can't remember the guy's name now. But the guy who was behind Calexit and organized the, the, the petition all that. He's throwing his hands up. He's 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 out of it. He's decided he's not going to do it anymore with CalExit. That's the push for California to become an independent republic separated from the United States. And then after he just threw his hands up, decided he's given up. He's not going to lead that anymore. He decided he's also going to leave the country and move to Russia. What does that tell well, you? Uh, it, it tells me that there's mental disease going on here. These pilgrims demand the First Amendment rights at home and all the other freedoms, 
and yet they they defend the most re- repressive Marxist right. regime. Uh, they, now, uh, listeners, if you want to call in, 951-922-3532. If you want to call in, 951-922-3532. Uh, and I need to move on because we're going to run out of time here, uh, and I want to talk about a number of things. So once again, uh, let people know what you've been reviewing, what you've been reading, and why it's so important for people to get their hands on this book. This is an extremely important book. It's Political Pilgrims, Travels of Western Intellectuals to the Soviet Union, China, and Cuba by Paul Hollander, H-O-L-L-A-N-D-E-R. All right. Uh, last topic uh, before we uh, uh, wrap this show up. we got about a half an hour left. Thanks for spending the time with us, folks. And once again, if you want to participate in this radio program, we've got time for you. Dial in, 951-922-3532. Your opinion? Do you have a question on the U.S. Constitution? What? Because remember, I'm the Constitution guy, and we haven't really uh, inserted the Constitution as much as usual into today's conversation. But if you have a constitutional question, you want to understand why the courts are doing something a certain way, or if they're allowed to, and so on and so forth, call this program. We are on live on KMET, 1490 AM at 951 951- Nine two two three five three two. All right. That all said, last Sunday was Easter, and uh, as Christians, we enjoy Easter as an opportunity to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the Great Commission advises us to share that good news to all, all that we can through the means available to us. And uh, when it comes to my Christian faith, and I was talking to someone about this the other day, knowing what I know about the U.S. Constitution and about good governance, it would. It would be a it would be a sin of omission if I was not talking about this stuff. A sin of omission. Now that said, uh, our works produces fruit, and our good fruit uh, is, is the beginning of our opportunity to share the gospel and witness to others about the good news of Christ. But yet, but now here's the reason why I bring that up. That's the foundation of the American system. We've been talking about Islam. We've been talking about the really the atheism of of communism, but the foundation of the American system is a godly one. When Alexis de Tocqueville visited the United States in, eight, in the 1830s to observe our penal system, he learned more about the American experience than he expected. He came, to, he came from secular France, where the separation of church and state was fiercely enforced, and with a history of the church and the monarchy before the French Revolution intertwined in an unholy marriage, used as a weapon of tyranny against the people, one can understand why the French kind of had that point of view. De Tocqueville arrived in the United States. He was surprised what he saw. The politicians prayed and the pastors preached politics. Yet the government did not control the church and the religious community did not have any an, an iron grip control over the government. He saw that the true power of American freedom was through the churches and the faith of the citizens. The government largely complied with the authorities granted by the U.S. Constitution, largely because of the Christian influence on those who were in position to govern. The American politicians had maintained their Christian values and applied those values to their decisions as politicians. America has been great because America is good and because American churches have been engaged in American politics, or at least until the last century or so. And that's where I think we've gotten ourselves into trouble. I'm not talking about a theocracy. A theocracy where it was a Christian-run, you know, government, that would be dangerous, too. There's a chance of tyranny there. I'm talking about where we are faith-based in our lives and hold to those values. All right, we we do have a caller. Ed from Wildemar is on the line, so let's go ahead and bring him up, Sean. Ed, you're on the air with Constitution Radio on KMET 1490 AM. Welcome to the program. Hello. I uh, just a real quick comment on on everything being stolen from the West. And it's the fact that um, China, as I understand, is the first one to make a uh, hypersonic, I believe, a close to Mach 10 anti-ship missiles. That that was beyond what the United States could believe. Russia was the first one to to make um, a have a jamming device that literally shuts down ships. And I've heard about this. I think about. Eight years ago, they shut down a U.S. destroyer, just totally disabled it, and they have already threatened to use that. They also have, from an aerodynamic standpoint, some of the best aircraft in the world, and are the only way we can 
compare with theirs is through our electronics. So to say that they steal everything from the West is really not true. They have some brilliant minds. Obviously, there's going to be exceptions to the rules, and I I think we're speaking generally. Uh, Generally, leftism or uh, communist systems tend to uh, not create but to steal. Is there... Uh, exceptions, of course, there is. Uh, you know, I we can say anything. Well, this happens or that happens. There's always an exception to the rule. But it, it's another one that's fascinating is Israel. Israel has some of the uh, most sophisticated equipment in the world. And what's funny about that is a lot of it is they'll take our technology, make it better, and then they won't tell us how they did it. Well, when you get right back down to it. None of us has been able to come up with something that compares to what God made in the living cell. So and we all have true. a long way to this go. So I'm going to go back and listen. All right, thank you, comments. Ed, for the call. <laughs> and um, appreciate Ed calling in. If you have a question, comment, conversation that you want to have, once again, 951-922-3532. In about 30 minutes, I'm going to be running out the door, pinstripes. I still got to throw on my pinstripe suit and run out the door because I am the MC, the Master of Ceremonies for the Birth Choice Temecula Gala tonight, the evening under the stars. What, you didn't get tickets? Sorry, it's too late for this year's event, but you know what? Pay attention to what goes on at Birth Choice as they have a fall uh, October event coming up and then the event in April again, and also... So you can donate at any time, BCT, the number four, life.org, Birth Choice Temecula, our pro-life pregnancy center in the Temecula Valley, and uh, we have a satellite office in Hemet as well. So Birth Choice Temecula, I am actually a secretary on the board of directors for Birth Choice Temecula, and I am proud to be a part of that organization. I can't wait till tonight's event, but like I said, you can't go, that's okay need your donations because it takes money to save babies. It is an ongoing effort. Learn more, bct4life.org. That's BCT. That stands for Birth Choice Temecula. The number four, life, L-I-F-E, dot org. All right, so I was talking about the Christian impact on the founding of this country. And here's something that's fascinating. I was talking to uh, uh, Reverend... I'm sorry, Father, Father Josiah Trenum. He's the uh, pastor of of the St. Andrew Orthodox, Greek Orthodox Church in Riverside. And he was explaining to me that in the 1930s, the Christian church was really all that stood between the Christian foundation, foundational blocks of the U.S. Constitution and the forces of tyranny. The anti-constitutional segment of our society took full advantage of the situation, and as socialism was slowly being injected into the American system through the New Deal, the communists actually infiltrated the church and convinced the clergy that political involvement is no longer good for the church, that all of the church's energy must be focused on only on reaching new souls. While evangelism is a good thing, the primary job of Christians is to share the good news of the gospel, after all, you know, Matthew 28 verses 19 through 20, but the duty of the church is all to participate in civics is also among our paramount obligations as Christians. As Christians, when it comes to our political involvement, first, it is for us to pray for all of our representatives and political figures, and then the gospel has implications in all areas of our lives, including politics. So as Christians, our world worldview is based on God's understanding of reality, which we should extend to all parts of our lives. And a godly society leads to a virtuous government. Now, I'm talking about the communists, though, knowing, just like Alexis de Tocqueville in the 1830s knew that the strength of America is in its churches, and they attacked the churches directly. Now we have, for the most part, partly because of the Johnson Amendment, and partly because churches have just decided to do this, churches that keep the gospel inside the four walls of their church, and they say nothing about politics, now, of course, once again, getting back to what Ed said earlier, there's always exceptions. we got Jack Hibbs, uh, Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, which is very politically involved. Uh, Father Trenum's church uh, is very politically involved. Matter of fact, they're the ones that uh, helped save the cross on uh, Mount Rubidoux there in Riverside. But for the most part, we've got a lot of Christian religions that, uh, or churches that have either fallen for this idea that their faith should remain within the four walls of the church, they can't talk politics, and some of them have even stepped foot 
into the sandbox with the world, and you have some of these churches that have gay pastors and so on and so forth. Start with you, Dennis. What are your thoughts about this? Is this part of the reason we are in so much trouble? If we can get our churches turned around and politically involved, can we can we make a, a, a stronger statement as constitutionalists? Well, you know, the quote, you probably have the founding father in mind. It, it, it escapes me right now. But, uh, you know, this government is only, as you say, for a virtuous people. That it is, it is a Judeo-Christian uh, mindset. Uh, uh, you can go back into, uh, you know, you and I talked last week, you know, about the, the Bill of Rights and, and where right. rights come from and that they come from God and they don't come from government. and. Of right. course, uh, Marxists and all these guys, you know, everything comes from government. So, you know, there's, there's a huge pivot, you know, just on the basic assumption as to who we are as people. Are we, you know, children of God or are we just, uh, you know, things that, uh, created, uh, out of nothingness and evolved into man and we're subject to whatever the societies are we live in? And, and, and it's a, a huge black and white difference. Uh, I've told you many times that to me the founding documents, I call them American scripture because, you know, they should be followed and adhered to. You know, the Constitution and, and, uh, many of the other writings of the founding fathers, they reveal very clearly that they accepted deity. And, uh, society right. now is saying separation, church and state. You know, they're going the other way. You know, they're reinterpreting the Constitution, uh, twisting it to where the founding fathers would be rolling over in their grave. And the solution, we have all the tools in our kit, and uh, the founders did a good job. We just need to get back to basics, and we would solve a lot of our problems. Now, uh, I, I know the uh, uh, quote that you're referring to, but I'm going to give you guys four quotes real quick before I go over to Alex on this. Benjamin Franklin, only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. As nations become corrupt and vicious, they have more need of masters. John Adams, and I think this John Adams quote is the one you were referring to, our constitution was made only for moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Then we've got That's John Adams' one. cousin, yep. Samuel Adams. Yeah, that, that was the one, right? <laughs> then we got Samuel Adams. The sum of all this, if we would most truly enjoy the gift of heaven, let us become a virtuous people, then shall we both deserve and enjoy it. And then finally, George Washington, of all of the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, religion and morality are indispensable supports. So I think that nails it, right? It says it all. Uh, Alex? So, you know, not, not that I'm wanting the final half hour of this program to be like going to church here, but the <clears throat> Christian foundational building blocks of our American system are not only present and important, but is it not important for us to maintain them as foundational building blocks of our system? Which is why Obama told us, the first thing when he became president, that America is not a Christian country. Uh, our enemies uh, no, realize that our strength is in our God. Uh, there right. was a guy during World War II by the name of Antonio Gramsci. He was a theoretician for the Marxists. And he looked around the world and said, we're, the, the places we're not making any progress is places where Christians uh, are, are strong. Uh, as a consequence, rather than fighting the Christian church, which will be a losing battle, we need to take it over. And, that's and let's, let's, not for, let's not forget, too, Alex, in the Old Testament, Joseph and Daniel served in civil government, and through that service, they exerted significant influence that led to the flourishing of their nations through God's plan. Well, that lesson has been lost on these new uh, uh, religionists, who worship worship Marx and and Lenin and and uh, and Mao, uh, but the point is that what we ended up with was liberation theology. Uh, all throughout Latin America, the seminaries where they teach uh, priests to be priests, uh, they've been taken over by Marxists. We got a pope right. right now who is a Marxist. There's no question about it. Right. Uh, it, 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 when you go to a to a church nowadays, you're as likely to be talking to a to a communist as you are to a Christian. Uh, it's it's scary as hell. Well, Jesus Christ challenged the political leaders of his era. Even I mean, if for the, I'm not going to go through the whole story. For those of you who remember it, it was one of those such challenges 
uh, which led to uh, you know Christ saying, uh, "He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Throw the first stone." Uh, he was challenging the Sadducees, you know, and and uh, it, and it, during those conversations, he not only challenged them, he challenged their authority because they thought that their authority was an authority that was above God's. And uh, Paul stated that our, our duty is to all arenas. Uh, in Galatians 6.10, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Our works and our fruit extends to more than our personal lives, whether we realize it or not. Our fruit is how we are judged as Christians, and our good works should also include participating in the political process because of the legitimate and significant role of government in our lives. Any well, thoughts? The, opposi the opposition is always telling oh. us what our founding fathers wanted, uh, that they didn't want any involvement of, of Christianity, etc. Well, well, well they'll liars. tell you they were just a bunch of deists, they didn't care about religion, but what you find out is all of them uh, were men of faith, even Benjamin Franklin, first of all. Uh, second of all, while they did not want a religious controlling mechanism like you had in the Church of England or, or in France before the French Revolution, the fact that we have a biblical value-based foundation is imperative to a free system. Without that, you cannot have a free system. All right, I want to get to Dennis because I I I, I, I uh, tossed the softball over to him a second ago and and uh, I want to hear what he has to say. So, Dennis, what's your thoughts about what Alex and I have been talking about here? Well, those that condemn us only have the freedom and the ability to condemn us because we have given them a system of government that gives them that freedom. Um, if they were to go to the non-godly uh, countries of the world, they would flee them, because uh, all the refugees that we have, all the problems that we have of people fleeing countries, they are fleeing centralized government, top-down, dictatorial, whether it be Islamic, whether it be communist, whether it be atheistic. They are fleeing those, and they're coming to West. They're coming to Europe. They're coming to the, the what used to be the Western culture. And so even here in, in good old California, you know, the People's Republic of California, um, if they really had their way and they could silence us and do what they wanted to do, then they would be uh, uh, consuming themselves because they would no longer have the uh, the freedom. It, it, it's like our own breath. You know, they the, the breath they breathe is a gift from God, but they don't recognize it, but they just don't understand where the power comes from. And the, the, the freedoms they've had in this country have come from God-centered uh, uh, Judeo-Christian concepts, and without that, this country just would have been an extension of Europe with another king, another government, and we'd just be like right. everybody else. Well, Dennis and Alex, though, we have the average parent or citizen, average American out there saying, you know, gosh, Doug, I, I, you know, I'd love to do more, but, you know, i got to get the kids out the door in the morning, then i got to go to work, they come home, you know, and i got soccer practice, then, you know, you know, my wife ate dinner, and then, you know, by the time we get through all of that, it's time to go to bed. I'm tired. I've got a life to live. i got responsibilities. You know, it's just I don't have time for that. I'll let, I'll let the people who really care and find it important do all the work. And the problem is the people, those people are usually raging leftists. I mean, in the, in the United States, sometimes we have trouble recognizing the importance of being involved politically. And, and partly because, you know, some Christians have adopted the mindset of our secular government governing systems too and i mean we've come to believe that the acceptance of the secular establishment without christian influence upon it is inconsequential so how could it we tell ourselves interfere with the task of furthering the gospel or my ability to live my christian life which you know I'm, i've got a busy one right so i'm not supposed to now now let me back up here i'm i'm once again i'm not suggesting we pursue a theocracy which can be as, just as tyrannical as a secular uh, dictatorship well we must also not allow the system to completely abandon godly principles in countries where ch the church operates underground and the christians in those countries they know full well what happens when christians cannot influence the system and as a result their religious liberties have been taken from them 
I mean, the world of politics has real world implications on Christian evangelism and lives and religious freedoms. Therefore, Christians must engage in the political process by leveraging their rightful authority, advocating for laws and policies that contribute to our country being a virtuous society. After all, we have seen throughout history that godly government and laws based on Christian virtues and principles directly contribute to the prosperity and freedom of a society. Politics is a means of affecting great change and must be engaged by Christians who love their neighbor while also wishing to protect their religious liberties. Government derives its authority from God to promote good and restrain evil. Uh, Paul in, in Romans urges that prayers be made for kings. I'm sorry, in First Timothy he urges this, that prayers be made for kings and all who are in high positions that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life. First Timothy two, uh, chapter two, uh, verses one and two. Paul understood the need for Christian participation in government. Government pay plays a vital role in the work of God's kingdom on earth. Good government encourages virtue and the population living peaceably among each other. When we move away from godly principles in government, uh, then we'll surely see the rise of unrest and instability, and that's what we have been seeing. Right, Alex? Uh, absolutely. Uh, there's, there's no question that a good Christian country is a country that observes human rights, that allows for, for religious differences, uh, all the good things. Uh, it, it, it's almost axiomatic, and yet uh, the, the evil ones are continuing to brainwash our children into thinking that somehow or other we are the oppressors. And by the way, that uh, caller, uh, when I said that the, the communists had stolen all of our, our technology, uh, that is true. It does not mean that they didn't develop some technology of their own. They did. I understand in, in military uh, right. uh, matters, they, they've, they've done some interesting work. But everything that we had, they stole. Now, uh, get back to my, my point in hand. Without a godly government and without Christians engaged in politics, we will see the normalization of what was once considered unlawful. That's what we're seeing, isn't it, Dennis? I mean, we're seeing... Uh, a, a legalization of things that we would have never dreamed they would be legalizing at one point. Because when I say a moral, godly society, I mean a common sense society too. It's common sense under a value-based system that you protect your borders. It's common sense in a godly system that you don't let government dictate to a baker what kind of cake they can bake. It's common sense in a godly society that you don't slaughter the unborn while they're still in the womb. But we've got the legalization of things that shouldn't be legalized because we as Christians have been not holding up our side of the bargain. Right? Which book was that, that uh, where the guy outlined the program? He had a, a copy of the communist program for subverting America and uh, they've been checking off one issue after another. I forget which. Well, well you, was. you've got a number of them. You got the Naked Communist. You've got uh, Saul Linsky's um, uh, uh, book, uh, uh, Rules for for Radicals. But the one that I like to that I've read recently, and I don't have it in front of me. It's called, uh, but it's called the uh, uh, the Blueprint, and it and explains how the left flipped Colorado blue and the tactics they used. So there's a lot of books out there. I'm working on my own books on this kind of stuff. All right, you know, about back to Dennis. So uh, is it the duty of Christians to use civics to advance godliness, which leads to justice and a successful culture? Well, sure. You're supposed to uh, make society a framework wherein that which you believe, you know, can uh, be uh, uh, attained. And, uh, you know, Christians, I mean, Christ, you know, he said, give to Caesar that which is Caesar. You know, give to God the things that are God. Uh, believe in me, uh, you should. But if you don't believe in me, you know, I'm not going to kill you. I mean, you know, it was a, a gospel of invitation. It wasn't a gospel of coercion. 
And under Christian government, it's the same thing. Everybody can live under the same banner. I mean, you've talked about how the the safest uh, uh, Muslims in the Middle East are the ones that live in Israel. You know, I mean, they have oh, rights; exactly. they can vote. You know, so uh, uh, that, that's why I say our enemies um, only have the right to uh, challenge us uh, due to the society that they live in, based upon you know uh, Christian principles. You know, if, if they uh, didn't the, have uh, book that uh, as a ago, founding the document. Blueprint. Pardon me. Uh, the, the book I mentioned a moment ago, The Blueprint, I found it on my bookshelf. Uh, the Blueprint, How the Democrats Won Colorado and Why Republicans Everywhere Should Care by Adam Schrager, S-C-H-R-A-G-E-R, and Bob Witwer, W-I-T-W-E-R. That's, you know, I, I'm going to see if I can get a hold of these authors. I'm going to see if I can get them on the program. I had an opportunity for Sheriff Clark. I uh, but by the time and, and I sent out my request, but he had done so many shows that by the time I got to my little show, uh, he he was done doing interviews. So we didn't get uh, Sheriff Clark. We'll try again in the future. But um, you know, th- there's people out there that really understand this and what's going on. And I think the authors of this book, The Blueprint, might be someone we want to get on the program. Um, and listeners, if you know someone you would like to have on the program, send me an email. Constitution speaker at yahoo.com. Constitution speaker at yahoo.com. Let me know. We've got uh, about five minutes left of the program. So if you want to get in a last second question or comment, 951 922 3532. three five three two nine Right here on Constitution Radio with Douglas V. Gibbs. ABC News Radio, 1490 AM, KMET Smart Talk Radio in Southern California. Yes, for those of you listening to us online and around the world, there are a handful of constitutionalists and conservatives in California. Uh, I'm told all the time they can't believe that people like me exist in this state. Yes, we do exist. And in fact, there are – did you know that there are one million people registered as Republicans in L.A. County? You know, I, I think uh, uh, probably our good friend Alex here is probably one of them. But uh, now Alex, uh, because we're uh, coming up on the end of the show, any final comments about what we've been talking about? Uh, on, on as regards the future, uh, I'm, I'm what I'm saying is that if we lose this struggle uh, that we're engaged in now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, given the technology available to the oppressors, I don't see how, you know, like, for instance, nobody was going to break out of Hitler's Germany. Nobody was going to break out of Stalin's Russia in terms of... So we got to stop it before he gets there. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that, 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 that this time, if we lose, uh, there's no coming back. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying we are going to lose. I'm saying that I'm operating on the assumption that we'll win. But if we don't win, I don't see how civilization can re- can return after a, an Islamic or a communist takeover. Or at least not within a few centuries anyway. All right, yeah, uh, well, Dennis, final thoughts on what we've been talking about? Well, I just go back to a quote from my father that I attribute to my father. I don't know if he ever really said it this way, but over the years uh, I kind of put it in terms that he would have said, and, and, and it's, it's this. It says, in this life you have the right to do many things, but you don't have the right to quit. And so uh, uh, to those that, you know, uh, you were referring to earlier that are too busy, they got soccer practice and all the rest, you know, we have to be engaged. And if the time ever comes to where the dark, uh, the darkness takes over, you know, you will forever uh, wonder why you didn't do more. And, of course, the the children and grandchildren after you that have lost their ability of, of, of having the American dream, uh, you know, will weigh heavy on your guilt as well it should. So we do need to uh, fight the good fight, endure to the end, you know, as uh, Paul talked about, and uh, uh, God will hold us accountable for the light we have and what we do with it. You know, and, and I'm, I'm not a quitter. I, I fight until the finishing blow, and that's just the way I am. And like I said, knowing what I know, it would be the sin of omission if I didn't do what I do. 
I also believe that uh, anything can happen. Anything is possible. Uh, and it is a, a very dangerous time. Uh, we we got a reprieve with President Trump, but with that, Trump is not the salvation. And it doesn't. And it shouldn't matter who's in the White House. If we were doing our job, it wouldn't matter. But as citizens, we haven't been doing our job. Okay, we're out of time, so why don't you plug yourself? Go ahead, Alex, you first. Yeah, uh, the website is conservativecanonade.org. Uh, there's not, it's not just poems. It's essays. It's it's letters. It's it's stuff that'll keep you thinking. Uh, How are you doing on the blog? Tonight? Pardon? How are you doing on the blog? Have we gotten the blog going yet? Yeah, I got it going, and and uh, for some reason or other, the, the last blog I put up dropped off. So I've got to I've mm. got to repair that. All right. Well, I'm gonna pay you a visit. I got a couple gifts for you anyway. Dennis, plug yourself. I would just say uh, all this conspiracy, all the stuff, would uh, is found in the movie The Enemies Within. So go to enemieswithinmovie dot com, and you'll uh, have your eyes opened. And I am Douglas V. Gibbs, your host for the last two hours. Thanks for listening. DouglasVGibbs.com, PoliticalPistachio.com. God bless America and listeners. God bless you. Thank you for listening. And never forget, united we stand, combined we kick butt. If we're not working together, we're not going to take care of this. We need to be working together. We need to be allies. We need to be bound together in this fight because this is a fight for the soul of America the heart and soul of America. This is a fight between individualism and collectivism, godliness and ungodliness. We'll see you next week right here on KMET.